So what I'm going to have you guys start off with is writing the memory word. And then you're going to memory work. So you're going to try your best to write out the verse, which was John 3.16. I already wrote that out. Ooh, yeah, I so now we're going to try to do it as from memory. Wait, hold on. I know it's from memory. And then the fourth petition. And then... My online people, you also just try your best to write out the memory work verses, which were John 3.16, and then the fourth petition. And then Vicar's going to look them over. Well, you know, then you're ahead for next time. So write that out. And oh, here it is, John 3.16. Yep, so you're going to try to do it from memory. Okay. Already wrote down John 3.16. Great. That's what I do. I like it. That's a good way to memorize. All right. So, Gabe, did you hear that? You're going to try to write down the verse of the day, which was John 3.16 from memory, and then the fourth petition. Like Corinthians, just try your best. Verse. I thought the verse was, in, was Corinthians, but no. I thought that John 3.16 was earlier. Do you need, okay. and then, Max, if you need a pencil or a pen, they're over on the card. I already have a pen. Okay. Let me just get this stuff in. That's a great way to try to memorize getting all your stuff. I have a lot of these. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only yeah. son. Don't you're gonna, you're yeah. gonna try to write that from memory now. Mm-hmm. So on this blank piece of paper, try to not look at it and then try to write it out. Okay. Is it okay if I just like take a little bit of like skim through it and then after I do that, I'll try to remember it as for the best of my ability? Is it okay that I can do that? Sure. Read through it one time in your head. And then try your rest, okay? Okay. All right, so just take a few more minutes, just trying your best.
of them, so I have three sixths in. Great. And then do you guys need, do you think if you had more time, you'd be able to write more of the fourth partition, or it's kind of where it is? I literally can't remember, like, the first word. I think I can. I I I'll re, I think I remember the fourth petition. Okay. I just need to go through the whole Lord's Prayer in my head. Okay. So then, yep, that's a good way to think about it. Going through the whole Lord's Prayer in your head. I think we could even probably say the Lord's Prayer out loud together. I remember it. You remember it? I remember the fourth petition now. Okay, then you can write that down. Well, was the fourth I remember? That's okay. We're just going to try our best. We'll, we'll give you a 60 more right. seconds. I need to, okay. Oh, no. I will definitely not be able to write that. Okay. Did I write down the fourth petition correctly? I guess you'll find out. So write your name down, and then Vicar's actually going to look at these later today. Okay. And we'll stop there for now, and if you need more time, that's all right. It was just kind of to test what you could do. And let's see, does anyone online have any prayer requests for today before we get started? Uh, you can shake your head yes or no. No prayer requests. How about in person people? Any prayer requests before we get started? All right. If you think of one, you'll have another chance at the end of class too. Okay. So let's fold our hands and bow our heads. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much for giving us the opportunity to gather together this morning, whether in person or online, to dive into your word and um, to learn more about forgiveness as sins. Lord, help us forgive others and grow in our forgiveness as we know we're forgiven from you. Amen. Okay, so now, yeah, you can just put them in the middle of the table and I'll get it at the end of class. So we are going to open up to Matthew 18. Now I know, Gabe, you mentioned you don't have your catechism book do you have a bible that you can look at right now or you don't have a bible either and you can unmute yourself to answer okay can you unmute yourself matthew 18 what it's on it's what do i have a minute no, you're you, you're not on mute. What do you mean? It's on the screen. Well, he said the. Uh, what was the, Matthew eight? What was the Bible again? Matthew eighteen one, but it's on the screen. Yep, Matthew eighteen twenty one through thirty five. Okay, um, and got it. All right. Okay, so we are gonna start with twenty one through thirty five. So. Do our online people want to read it all? Yes, no, no, okay. I think Gabe might be frozen there. 
All right, so I'll start with verse 21 and then I'll read three verses and then Gabe, you can read some verses and then when you're just done reading, just stop and then Max will pick up. Then Peter came to Jesus and asked, Lord, how many times shall I forgive my brother or sister who sins against me? Up to seven times? Jesus answered, I tell you, not seven times, but 77 times. Therefore, the kingdom of heaven is like a king who wanted to set the accountants with his, who wanted to settle accounts with his servants. As he began the settlement, a man who was not able to pay, the master, ordered that he and his wife and his children and all that he had be sold to repay. I missed a line there. Wait. As he began the settlement, a man who owed him ten thousands of bags of gold was brought to him. Sorry, I just lost with... track. I lost track. That's because I messed up. So Gabe's going to start at six twenty-five. Since he was not able to pay, the master ordered that he and his wife, his children, and all that debt is, that he had to be that he had to be sold to repay the debt. The servant fell on his knees before him. Be patient with me, he begged, and I will pay back everything. The servant's master took pity on him, canceled the debt, and let him go. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But when that servant went out, he found one of his fellow servants. He owed him a hundred silver coins. He grabbed him and began to choke him. Pay back what you owe me, he demanded. His fellow servant fell to his knees and begged him, be patient with me and I will pay it back. But he refused. Instead, he went off and had the man thrown into prison until he could pay the debt. When the other servants saw what had happened, they were outraged and went and told their master everything that would happen. Then the master called the servant in. You wicked servant, he said. You have had mercy on your fellow servant just as I had on you. Shouldn't you have had mercy on your fellow servant just as I had on you? In anger, his master handed him over to the jailers to be tortured until he could pay back all he owed. This is how my heavenly father will treat each of you unless you forgive your brother or sister from your heart. So you can open up your workbook to lesson 29, page are going to be looking at the fifth petition today, which says, forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And then that's the fifth petition. And then we will, did you write that down for the fourth? No, I just wrote what I wrote for the fourth petition. Oh, okay. So I wrote, the, I wrote down the You were just petition. one ahead, Max. That's okay. You're all prepared for next week though. That's mm -hmm. great. So well, let's read the, what does this mean together? We pray in this petition that our Father in heaven would not look upon our sins or because of them deny our prayers. We are worthy of none of the things for which we ask. Neither have we deserved them, but we ask that he would give them all to us by grace, for we daily sin much and we surely deserve nothing but punishment. So we too will forgive from the heart and gladly do good to those who sin against us. So Jesus told a parable to show us the difference between the debt God forgives and the debt we are to forgive others. So question one here, Jesus's parable was prompted by a question Peter asked. What was Peter's question? Yeah, Max. How many times should he forgive give his brother or sister that sins. Exactly. So you can just summarize that as how many times I should forgive someone.
What do you guys think happened that made Peter ask that question? Okay. Um, he was someone sitting against him. Yeah, probably because if you think about you, like you wouldn't think to ask that question unless someone did something to you. Like, do like, I really have to forgive them again? Or like maybe like for his brother or sister, they like, did something wrong that he just didn't really like it. Yeah, and so that's a good point, Max. Oftentimes in the Bible, when it says brother or sister, it doesn't just mean you know like our family, our brother and sisters, but it's all of the, like the believers and the people we live with. They would call them brothers and sisters. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So when someone probably did something against him repeatedly, mm -hmm. so again and again. So do you guys know, is a talent a lot of money, not a lot of money? What? What did you say? A talent. Or did you already read the next yeah, question? Sure. You already read it? A talent? Yeah, did you read the next question? Like, as like something that you can do? Yeah, so in the Bible, a talent is money. Uh, it's, a, it's a currency. So in the section we read, we heard that he owed the king 10,000 talents. So if you read that question, your next question number three, You'll see that was about ten billion dollars. What? So, so he owed him a like, lot so of money. Ten thousand tenths that ten thousand tenths time, to U.S. dollars is one billion. Like ten billion in today's oh. money. Yeah. So he he owed him. He owed this king so much money. Jeez. And what was going to happen if he couldn't pay that back? He had to sell his family? Yeah. He and his family would have to be sold into slavery. Just and, they, and all they own, not just their family. So everything they owned, they would have had to sell. And they would have even had to sell themselves into slavery to pay back. Yeah. So that's number three. Why did the king forgive the debt? Yeah. Because, because of, like, he, he begged? Yeah, but even if he begged, the king didn't have to pay back the debt. I mean, that was the king's money. He didn't have to pay that back or forgive that debt. Do you still have your Bible open to that uh, yeah. section? Can you read verse 27? Okay. 27. The servant's master took pity on him, canceled the debt, and let him go. Mm -hmm. What does pity mean? So pity, I, it depends on the different translations. Like my translation says he had mercy on him. So the king had mercy on the man. So it's kind of like um, the king felt sorry for him. Yeah, the king felt sorry for him, and the king, the king forgave him out of his own goodness. The king didn't have to forgive him. That's a great point, Caitlin. Thanks for sharing. So this parable is a picture of what God has done for us. Who, if who would the king be in the story? Yeah, you can both can say it. God. Yeah, yeah, God, Jesus. 
We have done so much. We owe, if we, if our sins were like money, it'd be way more than yeah, the $10 that billion. Be, dollars. That would be more, it would be like infinite. Yeah, amount of money. it would be an infinite. And God has forgiven that much of us. And we kind of answer this question. Us? Yeah, more of the servant. The servant left the king's presence with a massive debt forgiven. Whom did he see on his way out? He just left, had this huge debt forgiven. Gabe. Yes. And this servant owed him money. Yep. And he just was focused on getting it now, and even though it was canceled back until, like, I don't know how long. Yeah, it'd be kind of like someone just gave you guys your dream car. Like, you're old enough to drive. Someone just gave you your dream car, and one of your friends had borrowed a little tiny toy car from you, and you're like, I want that little tiny toy car back. But you were just given this awesome, like, I don't know. What, what are you guys car Maybe. people? Do you like I mean, I like kind of racing car? Hot Wheels cars. Yeah. But imagine, like, you had one of those in real life. Someone gave you that version. That would actually be really cool. Yeah. And then you went and were bothering someone over, like, a little toy. I mean, yeah. I mean, that would be pretty cool, though. Maybe yeah. you would just, like, want it for, like, a memory. Like, you know, that's like true. where it actually came from. That's true, but that's kind of like the situation. Like the, this guy just oh, he got such a big debt but forgiven. Even he and then, just got it, and he it was a borrow, so he he would have probably given it back too. So yeah, what does he that do? And how did he treat that servant? He treated him really badly by mm -hmm. like choking him and just like yeah. Yeah, he choked him and had him thrown into jail. So in the next, we kind of see the comparison. His fellow servant owed him 100 denarii, which is about 100 days wages. Wait. So it's about $19,000, which that's so still a lot of 100 money. 100 denarii you know? is equal to 19,000 US dollars. In that's today's time, yeah. Even though that is nothing to 10 billion. Right, it's still, it is a lot of money, but it's not $10 billion, yeah. you're right. It, it's no small amount, of it, but compared to what the king had just forgiven him, it's such a little amount. So why did the servant's first actions upset the king so much? Okay. Uh, because it didn't have, like, the fact that he just repaid him a $10 million, or not repaid him, but like a, forgiven him a $10 billion debt, it didn't have, like, any impact on him whatsoever. It didn't affect him at all. Right. And if you remember, he was, like, begging to the king, on his knees begging just had basically his whole life kind of saved before him because he would have had his whole family would have had to go into slavery and maybe he would have had to sell everything too yeah he wouldn't have had a house his anymore pets if he had some yeah if they had an like they probably had some cattle or livestock animals yeah they probably all would have been sold so he ref he refused to show the kind of pity he had been shown Now what I want you guys to do, once you're finished writing this down, I want you to think of something that, it could either be something that you currently didn't forgive someone for, like maybe there's something that someone's doing that's bothering you, 
they did something wrong to you and you didn't forgive them. If you can't think of something now, you can think of a past example. And I want you just to write that on the bottom of your page. You write like opportunity to forgive and then write down your example. And Kaylin, I want you to think of it too. And I'm not gonna make you guys share this if you don't want to share what you write down, but I want you to think of something that you can forgive someone for at the bottom of your page. If you're struggling to think of something, Max, you can think of like, maybe think of classmates. Maybe someone did something. Kellen, I don't know where everyone else is today. Um, you're right, there's only two people in person. She she put in where a- Where did Gabe go? Gabe disappeared. I, he's out of town and I, I think his, he froze before he disappeared. Oh, so yeah. I think his Wi-Fi might not yeah. be that good. But I think some people are maybe on vacation, Kaylin, or- Yeah, this winter break. This winter break so, right now, yeah. so. But I'm glad that you're here today. Well, if you couldn't think of anything, then Gabe, okay, that's gonna be, or not you, Max, that's going to be something I want you to think of throughout the week is an opportunity to forgive someone. Okay. I'll try to think of something. Yeah. Because there are opportunities every day that we can think of. Um, so just think throughout the week, how could I forgive someone? All right. Number 10, as the first servant celebrated the forgiveness of that huge debt, what should he have done when he saw the second servant? Yeah. I have pity on him. Mm -hmm. Forgiven the debt. When do we behave like the first servant in the way he dealt with the second servant? Okay, sounds good, Kaylin. When do we behave the first servant in the way, like the way he dealt with? Mm -hmm. Max? Um, mm. Not like a specific example, but what, what would it look like? What would we not do? Um, I would not choke somebody. Awesome. Right, but how are we like him? We are simple. Mm -hmm. And what do simple people not always do? Um, forgive each other. Forgive each other. That, that's a weirdly worded question. So when someone does something wrong against us and we don't want to forgive that person.
Why is God so upset if we hold these grudges and don't forgive people who have sinned against us? Hmm? Because he forgave everybody who the Christians already. Exactly. He's like that, that merciful king who forgave all of his sins. He's forgiven us so many sins. And sometimes we struggle to forgive just one. So do you guys remember the use of the locking and the unlocking keys? Mm -hmm. do you remember like the unlocking and the locking key? Um, they're used like whether you forgive someone or not. Mm -hmm. And can you give an example of the locking key? Um, when someone's not like repentant and they don't actually like, I don't know. Like yeah, yeah, you're definitely on it. When someone turns against their actual thing. Yeah, I don't know that, that well, you were. What were you going to say? So someone's not repentant. Yeah. Then what would you do? Use the locking key. Mm -hmm. And what does that mean that you use the locking key? Yeah. Don't forgive them and like. Yeah, you don't forgive them. But why would we not want to forgive someone? It sounds like we are always supposed to forgive someone. Max? Because they keep on doing it? Not just because they keep on doing it. Because someone could keep doing something, but then keep repenting for it, Kate. Um, because uh, it, it could be used as like a form of warning. Mm -hmm. Right, because we what we would want them to do is to turn from that sin and to recognize what they've done. So there is a time when we wouldn't do that. But we're going to open up our Bibles. Um, so you'll open back up to Matthew 18. You're already in Matthew 18. So we're going to look at verses 15 through 18 this time. And once Gabe gets there, then we'll read. 18, 15, there you go. So then, um, Max, do you want to read verses 15 and 16? And then Gabe, you read 17 and 18. Okay. If your brother or sister sins, go and point out their fault just between the two of you. If they listen to you, you have won them over. But if you, but if they will not listen, take one or two others along so that every matter may be established by the testimony of two or three witnesses. If he refuses to listen to them, Tell it to the church, and if he refuses to listen to you in the church, treat him as you would a pagan or a tax collector. I tell you the truth, whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, whatever you lose on earth will be loose. So if someone sins against us, instead of being ang excuse me, angry or holding a grudge, what should we do? We should forgive them. We should forgive them. And we should talk to that person about it.
how often will God remind us of the sins he has forgiven us? So can you, um, Max, look up Jeremiah 31, verse 34, and then Gabe, you look up Psalm 103, 11 to 12. that one out us? No longer will they teach their neighbor or say one another, know the Lord, because they will all know me from the least of them to the greatest. Declares the Lord, for I will give, I will forgive their wickedness and will remember their sins no more. And gave me on the takeaway, Psalm 103. 11 to 12. For as high as the heavens are above the earth, so is his love, so great is his love for those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far he has removed our transgressions from us. So how often will God remind us of the sins he's forgiven us of? Actually, oh, wait, the no. opposite. Never. Can you read your verse one more time, Max? Oh, okay. Sure. Psalm. So Jeremiah I mean, 31, Jeremiah 34. Jeremiah 31, 34. No longer will they teach their neighbor or say to one another, know the Lord, because they all know that me. From the least to, of them to the greatest, declares the Lord, for I will forgive their wickedness and remember their sins no more. Remember their sins no more, as far as the east is from the west. So never. When a sin is forgiven, it's gone. And I think that's a hard concept for us to remember because, I don't know about you guys, but if I've done something wrong, then I tend to think back on it, even after I've already prayed and asked for forgiveness. But you kind of sit there and you think back, maybe even a week later, a year later, you might think back like, why did I do that? But God doesn't do that at all. Once he's forgiven that sin, it's like it never existed. He just forgives us of it. So if someone sins against you, apologizes, and you forgive them, how often can you refer back to that sin and remind them about it? Game. Um, you shouldn't. Yeah. You should. Once a sin's forgiven, it's forgiven. It's gone. Now, does that mean that if that we forget what that person did no. you know you hear this you hear the phrase um oh, how does that go people say like forgive and forget but we, we we can't just forget things but it means that we don't hold it against them yeah. did you get this one down next yeah what do we learn from Jesus' parable and his answer to Peter about how often we should forgive someone's sins against us. So if someone steals something from me today, should you forgive them and then they steal something from me tomorrow and you keep doing that? Yeah, Max? We should forgive them 77 times. Yeah, so he doesn't mean a literal 77, 
that's just a number that shows a lot of time. Yep. So we're forgiven every, or we should forgive as often as someone sins. So keep, there's, there's never a time if someone's repentant that we shouldn't forgive them. Well, let's look at first before we look at that. Let's look at the um, chart in here. So what we're given is the means. God graciously wipes away all of our sins for Jesus' sake. And that gives us peace with God and moves us to forgive all who sins against us. And it assures us that God graciously gives all that we ask him in prayer. So anytime we ask God for forgiveness and come from a place of feeling sorry for that sin, God forgives us of that. And that also gives us peace and moves us to want to forgive others. Graciously cancel our debt of sin and lead us to do the same for others. That's what we're saying when we say, forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us or forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Mm -hmm. So our church says trespasses, but some churches, I don't know if have you guys been to a church before where you've heard them say, forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Yeah, you have. Some churches say that in the Lord's prayer instead of trespass. Like the church I went to in Wisconsin before I came here said that, but it's kind of the same thing. We're forgiving. What are, I guess, do you guys know how a trespass means? Uh, like you, like you're trespassing on something you shouldn't. You're like passing through something you shouldn't be passing through. Yeah. So when we pray in the Lord's prayer, forgive us our trespasses. Does that mean, hmm, God, forgive us for the times when we're just walking through other people's yards? But whenever I, you know, think a thought I shouldn't, that's okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No. <laughs> So I gave you a little, I want to expand. You are on the, that is definitely a trespass, but I want to expand on that definition a little bit. Um, I think trespassing means going to the place, going to a place where you shouldn't go or you aren't allowed to go. Yeah, that's, that's what Max is saying too. And that's also kind of what you're hitting at, Gabe, crossing a line. Right. So trespass literally means crossing a line. Yeah, so crossing when you line. see a no trespass sign on a door, it's like, don't come don't in here. Or it's the law. Yeah, but also... And you can get arrested if you just do that. How could, like, a thought be a trespass, then? Wait, what? How could a thought that you have be a trespass? Cross a line. Like, thank you of crossing a line? Well, like, you think of something you shouldn't think of. You cross that like line. thinking of, like, committing a sin? Yeah, so then when you think of committing a sin, or if you're thinking really bad about someone, like, if I'm thinking, oh, gosh, that Max... He just makes me so mad. That would be crossing a line and being a sin, right? So forgive us our trespasses. That's what that means when we when we pray that. So now look at our lesson question. How does God's forgiveness influence our forgiveness? I want you to take some time and maybe write out an answer to that. How does God's forgiveness influence our forgiveness and then i'm gonna want all of you so kaylin max and gabe to read your answer to that so i'll read the question one more time how does god's forgiveness influence our forgiveness and then i'll give you a couple minutes to write down an answer to that you can write it down in your book Can you type the question in the chat so I can um, remember it, please? Yeah. It's a little difficult because the way the Zoom set up today, but let me get there. I think it's actually...
Did you get that, Kaylin? Give you guys another minute to think of that. Okay, and Kaylin, did you have time to get something right down? Can you read that out loud? Because it shows up really, it shows really small on the screen. So that way, Max. God forgave our sins so that we could forgive of our sins. Yeah, that's a great summary. And then what did you write down? I wrote something similar to that. I said, we should forgive others as God forgave us. Yeah. What did you um, write down? I said, God should be our influence and representative in everything we do. Yeah, so God's forgiven us all our many sins, and we will forgive others whenever they sin against us, no matter how severe our sins. So in that way, we're following what God's done for us, like you said. Okay, and what we'll do, did you guys have, I didn't look over your questions from the worksheet 28 that you did. Did you guys have any questions on those? Do you want to go through those to make sure you got those down all right? Um, sure. All right. So, our daily bread comes from our hard work. False. False. Yeah. Yep. If we are honest and hardworking, we deserve our daily bread from God. False. False. In the fourth petition, by daily bread, we mean all our bodily needs. True. Mm -hmm. True. A Christian is right to worry about his retirement. Why do you kind of false question it? Yeah. I'm kind of false too, but I'm still just not sure about it a little bit. Okay, and well, let's talk about that one then. Why? So you guys both said false. So why yeah. did you pick false? Um, because it's you're never right word. We should always trust in God. Okay. Yeah. And is that the same reason you did? That's that's pretty similar to that. Okay. Well, then I'll ask you this. So why did you hesitate and think, maybe that's true? I mean, it's like, how do I explain this? If you want, you can phone a friend to see if his, he wants to explain. It's always hard for me to explain stuff sometimes. Yeah, it's hard to get our thoughts into words. Because you guys both kind of hesitated on that one. Like, well, maybe, yeah. What, what were you thinking, Gabe? Um, because when you worry, sometimes, like, sometimes when you worry, it, like, leads to you, like, planning different things. And, like, you can plan for your future if you can't really worry about it. So it's kind of similar. Okay, yeah. And I think that is a good thought. I think this would be, this could be true is a Christian has a right to plan about his retirement. Like, right? Like, God doesn't say, don't plan. But... He says not to worry. So there is the difference of like, if someone's making a plan out of worry, thinking I'm going to plan this so that I have control over my future, that's not good because ultimately we, we don't have control. God's the one in control. But we can make a plan and say, God, may this be your will because God could still change that plan because God always, his will changes. So that's a good one to talk about. All right, buying insurance is a way of ignoring God's promise for daily bread. What do you guys say? False. False. Worries about having or gaining earthly things are sins. True. Mm -hmm. God will always provide everything we really need. True. True. 
We know God can provide daily bread because he created all things. True. True. God provides richly for our daily bread to forgive us times to consider his love, or to give us times to consider. True. True. If we don't pray for God for daily bread, God will not give it to us. False. Exactly. Yep, you guys got all of those. And then let's look at your memory work for this time. Get spreadsheet pulled up. I wonder if it's the next one. So the fifth petition, Psalm 103, 11 and 12. This is your memory work for next time. Did I you feel write? like I wrote that down already. Oh, maybe I'm just you checking. Did. I'm checking. I'm you checking. You might have got ahead. Yeah, but I, yeah I, I already wrote that down. Well, great. Now then you're already, do you want to read it out loud for us so we can? Sure. For as hot, wait. For as high as the heavens are above the earth, so great is his love for those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far has he removed our he has removed our transgressions from us. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So that is going to be your memory verse for next time, and then memorizing the fifth petition and completing worksheet 29. Now, did I already you, did a worksheet 29. You already did that too? Did you already do 29 too? Yeah. Well, do we want that to go? That was on the worksheet sheet. Like, that was on the homework for the on the worksheet. I didn't even write that on the Well, you guys are ahead. Do you want to go over that then too? And we'll see if um, sure. how you guys did for that. I think we didn't do the lesson last time. So, okay. like, we just went through the memory work. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I so looking at number one, only those who are not Christians should pray for forgiveness. False. Mm -hmm. How would that ch statement be true? Change it to be true. Well, okay. wait, hold on. Um, all those, wait, no. Um, let me think. Everyone should pray for forgiveness. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but then everyone should pray for forgiveness, but do non-believers pray? Um, no. Right, you, you pray as a sign of faith. So Christians should pray for forgiveness. Because and we hope that all people are praying forgiveness, right? Because we want all people to believe. So in that yeah. sense, everything's good. Number two, Jesus wanted people to pray the Lord's Prayer once a week. False. How would that be true? Jesus wanted the people to pray the Lord's Prayer every day. He didn't specify how often he yeah. says, but it is mm -hmm. because this is how, where is it? That's how he taught us to pray. So mm -hmm. he doesn't specify how frequently he wants, but it is great that we get to say that in church. And it is even better when we can pray to God on a daily basis, whether that be the Lord's prayer or other prayers. God forgives us because we promise to do better. False. How would that be true? God forgives us because Jesus died for our sins. Exactly. In the fifth petition, we ask for bodily and material blessings. True. true. False. Huh? Oh, oh yeah, it. because it's tr the fifth petition is trespasses. Yeah, so, not the daily bread. So how would you make this one true? Um, in, in the fourth and the in the fourth petition, we ask for bodily and material. Yes, and then what were you gonna say? Because you were gonna say you were gonna go the other route and change the second half. I'm just gonna say the fifth petition, we don't ask for bodily material. Oh. <laughs> Okay, well, yeah, that's a little bit more of a simpler one. Yeah, or you could even say in the fifth petition. I guess what sh what do we pray for in the fifth petition? Um, uh, that our sins would be forgiven. Yeah. There we go. Every believer should pray that his sins be forgiven. Sure. Mm -hmm. This one's like the opposite of number one, right? Our good works 
are evidence that we have been forgiven by God. Mm -hmm. You said false for that one? Yeah. Well, let's talk about it. Why did you say false? Because, like, I just thought, like, I was still thinking about, like, God died for our sins, so it's just... Exactly, yeah, and I think what you're thinking of, so our good works are evidence that we've been forgiven, but our good works don't make us forgiven. Uh -huh. So if this said our good works are the reason that we've been forgiven, that would, would be false. false. Okay. But because we have this forgiveness out of thankfulness, we do good things like forgive others or give, sing our praises to God. So that I'm glad that we got to talk about that one because I could see how you would think false. Sometimes a forgiven Christian must refuse to forgive a repentant brother or sister. What were you gonna say? I don't, I can't even read what I wrote down what, there. Or what do you think? Wait, hold on. I mean, sometimes a Christian will probably refuse. Like sometimes, mm -hmm. maybe, but well, I mean, but I. But they but shouldn't. Yeah. Right? Maybe yeah. Must mm -hmm. So it's false. Uh -huh. Because I think what in this sentence makes it false? If we took out one word, this might be true. Okay. Sometimes a forgiven Christian sometimes must refuse. A forgiven Christian must refuse to forgive a non. To to forgive a penitent brother or sister? Yeah, so if we took out repentant, then this would be true, but that word's really important. We'll quick do the other two. Our forgiveness of other people's sins should be full and sincere. True. Mm -hmm. God forgives our sins because Jesus lived, died, and rose for us. True. True. All right, so you already have that part done for next time. Um, and you've got your memory work written down. Let's close in prayer. Did you guys think of any prayer requests that you had during the lesson? Um, nope. All right. Then let's close with prayer. Kaylin, do you also have spring break this or winter break this week? All right. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for giving us the opportunity to come together and learn more about forgiveness. Please keep us all safe throughout the week. Um, please bless those who have winter breaks and let that break be a full refreshing time that they can have more opportunities to think about you and dive into your word. Lord, please be with us as we go our separate ways at the end of the day. In your son's name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right. Thank you guys for coming today. I'm glad that I got to see you again, Kaylin. It's been a while. Oh, by the way, yeah. Um, my break ends Tuesday. So you've already had a break, some. Yeah. Well, that's really fun. Did you do anything fun on your break? No. no. I just. I just